tau overflows krishna murthy's belief in himself mary lutens a biographer says that there was a time when krishna murthy believed that he was to become the world teacher after correct spiritual and secular guidance and education another biographer describes the daily program imposed on him by lead beater and his associates which included rigorous training sports tutoring in variety of school subjects theosophical and religious lessons yoga meditation as well as instruction in proper hygiene and in the ways of the british society and culture at the same time lead beater assumed the role of guide in a parallel mystical instruction of krishna murthy in the existence and progress of this instruction was at time known only to select few while he showed natural aptitude for his sports krishna murthy always had problems with formal schooling and was not academically inclined he eventually gave up university education after several attempts at admission he did take to foreign languages in times speaking several with some fluency his public image cultivated by theosophists was to be characterized by a well polished exterior a sobriety of purpose a cosmopolitan look and uh, an otherworldly almost detached in his demeanor demonstratively all of these can be said to have characterized krishna murthy's public image to the end of his life it was apparently clear early on his on that he possessed an innate personal magnetism not of a warm physical sobriety what nonetheless emotive in its austerity and inclined to his Uh, to inspire veneration however as he was growing up krishna murthy showed signs of adolescent rebellion which was quite normal and emotional in his stability shaping at regime imposed on him also he was visibly uncomfortable with the public surrounding him and occasionally expressing doubts about the future prescribed for him after the first world war krishna murthy embarked on a series of lectures meetings and discussions around the world related to his duties as the head of the ose organization of a star of the east accompanied by nitya by then the organizing secretary of the nitya was the organizing secretary of the order krishna murthy also continued his writings the content the content of his talks and writings revolved around the work of the order and its members in preparation for the coming he was initially described as a hesitant and repetitive speaker but his delivery and confidence improved and gradually took command of the meetings in 1921 krishna murthy fell in love with an american 17 year old american named helen whose family associated with theosophists the experience was tempered by realization that his work and expected life mission precluded what would otherwise be considered normal relationship and by the end of mid 1920s the two of them drifted apart the event starting from 1922 were life altering experiences in 1922 
Krishnamurti and Nitya traveled from Sydney to California. In California, they stayed at a cottage near Ozai Valley. It was thought that the area's climate would be beneficial to Nitya, who had been diagnosed with tuberculosis. Nitya, Nitya's falling health became a concern for Krishnamurti at Ozai. They met Rosalind Williams, a young American who became close to them both and who was later to play a, an important and significant role in Krishnamurti's life. For the first time, the two brothers were without immediate supervision by their Theosophical Society minders. They found the valley to be very agreeable. Eventually, a trust formed by the supporters bought a cottage and surrounding property there for them. This became Krishnamurti's official residence at Ozai Valley in California. At Ozai in August and September of 1922, Krishnamurti went through an intense life-changing experiences. These had a greater role in his life. This has been, been variously characterized as a spiritual awakening, a psychological transformation and a physical reconditioning for Krishnamurti. The initial events happen in two distinct phases. First, he had a three-day spiritual experience and two weeks later, a lot longer lasting condition that Krishnamurti and those around him referred to as the process. This word is quite often used in Krishnamurti's life, the process. This condition occurred at frequent intervals and with varying intensity until his death. According to witness, it started on August 17, 1922, when Krishnamurti complained of a sharp pain at the nap of his neck. Over the next two days, the symptoms worsened with increasing pain and sensitivity, loss of appetite and occasional delirious ramblings. He seemed to lapse into unconsciousness but later recounted that he was very much aware of his surroundings and that while in that state, he had the experience of mystical union. This, the following day, the symptoms and the experiences intensified, climaxing with a sense of immense peace following and apparently related to these events the conditions that came to be known as the process started to affect him in September and October of that year. As a regular, most nightly occurrences, later the process resumed intermittently and varying degree of pain, physical discomfort and sensitivity occasionally a lapse into a childlike state and sometimes an apparent fading out of consciousness. Explaining explained this was explained as either his body giving in to pain or his mind going off. This was explained. These experiences were accompanied or followed by what was interchangeably described as the benediction, the immensity, the sacredness, the vastness, and most often 
the otherness or the other. This was a state distinct from the process. According to Mary, it is evident from his notebook that this experience of otherness was with him almost continuously during the rest of his life and gave him a sense of being protected. This feeling of being protected comes with almost all those who have reached such a state of awareness. Even the people who are seekers who are going through these experiences and they have explained that they always felt that they have been protected in various ways in his life. Krishnamurti described it in his notebook as typically following an acute experience of the process. For example, on awakening the next day, he writes, woke up early with that strong feeling of otherness, of another world that is beyond all thoughts. There is a heightening of sensitivity, sensitivity not only to beauty but also to all other things. The blade of grass was astonishingly green. That one blade of grass contained the whole spectrum of color. It was intense, dazzling and such a small thing so easy to destroy. This experience of otherness was present in him in daily events. It is strange how during one of one or two interviews that strength, that power filled even the room where Krishnamurti was. It seemed to be in one of his eyes and breath. It comes into being suddenly and most unexpectedly. This situation is beyond human control. It comes like a blessing unexpectedly. Once you are ready to absorb it any moment, it comes into being suddenly and most unexpectedly with a force and intensity that is quite overpowering and at the other times it is there quietly and serenely but it is there whether one wants it or not whether one accepts it or not there is no possibility of getting used to it because each time when it happens it happens in a new way that you have not experienced before. There is no possibility of getting used to it, for it has never been nor will ever be like that. Enough for now. Mm.